Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about are tree diagrams and conditional probability. Now, in this tree diagram, we're going to talk about tossing a coin two times. Now, notice uh, this highlighted yellow means we've tossed a coin the first time. The probability of getting uh, heads the first time is one half. The probability of getting tails is one half. Then, after after this, we have to consider tossing the coin a second time. All right, if you flip a heads the first time, you have two choices the second time, either heads or tails. The prob probability of getting heads is uh, one half. The probability of getting tails is one half. Now, these two have to add up to one. These two have to add up to one. And these two have to add up to one. Now, in order to find the probability, you, you basically follow the line that we've established here. Let me go ahead and get a highlighter here. We want to know the probability of getting two heads. So here's the probability of heads, and then again, the probability of heads. So what you do is the probability of two heads is one half times one half, which is one fourth. All right, now let's look at this little diagram here. Let me go ahead and uh, uh, combine these here so I don't leave them out. All right, so let me go ahead and minimize this. And now let's take a look, look at this right here. All right, we have two events. Uh, oh, no, that's not it. All right, so let's look at this next one. We, we're going to look at uh, playing cards. So getting uh, two hearts. All right, so once I've built my tree diagram, you got to remember, you have to put your probabilities here. So if there's 52 cards, this first one that I highlighted in yellow is the probability of uh, getting a heart, or this is flipping a card is, is, the, first, is the first event. Uh, I have 13 out of 52 that are heart, and I have 39 out of 52 which are not. Now, after I flip the second card, there are only 51 cards left. So it's 12 out of 51, and, but I still have my 39 that are not a heart. Now, let's say I get a, a card that is not a heart the first time, and we're going to follow this pattern. Well, in this case, uh, there are 13 hearts left, but there's only 51 cards, so 13 out of 51. And if we follow down here, it shows that we have 38 cards. We did have 39, but we flipped one, and it wasn't a heart. So that means I have 38 non-hearts left, so 38 out of 51. What we want to do is we want to look for uh, the probability that we get two hearts. So and that's what this is doing right here, the probability to get two hearts. So we're going to follow this. That's the probability of one heart times the probability of the other heart. So 13 over 52 times 12 over 51 gives me a probability of 0.059. All right, now let me go ahead and minimize that. Let me get rid of these. All right, this thing's kind of acting a little goofy here. All right, let me go ahead and get rid of these highlighted things here. All right, I'm going to pull this over here. Now, notice that this says the probab probability of event A and event B, heart on the second card. So if we say the probability of A and B, then what we have to do is this. We're going to do the probability of A times the probability of B given A. And that's what this is establishing here. The probability that we get a heart given that we got a heart the first time. All right. Now, this gives us the general multiplication rule. And if you notice, this is your rule right here. The probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B that A has been given. All right, now, we're going to do a little mathematics here. If I take this rule that I've highlighted in green, okay, if I take that rule, well, if I divide by the probability of A on both sides, what ends up happening is these two things cancel out. And then what I'm left, left with is this right here, which goes right here, see if that I've highlighted in blue. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this right here and you're going to place it right here. And so now you have something called the conditional 
probability formula. So this thing is called the conditional probability of formula. And the way that is read is the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. All right, so now let's do a little work on this. And let me show you with the Venn diagram. I want to know the probability of B given A. So notice on top, this is the intersection right here. So this is the intersection, 0 0.05. So the probability of A and B, that's a little, little section here, over the probability of A, which is this whole thing together. So that's 0 .3, uh, 3 plus 0 0.05 gives you 0 0.35. And then when you divide that, your answer is 0.143. All right, now we're going to do one more thing. Now we're going to see what happens when events are independent. All right, and that'll be.